Hey people, we're taking a look at what specifically can be upgraded in the X1 Nano and also to take a look on the inside. A quick disclaimer to say we're not responsible for any of the stuff you do to your laptop, treat them with care, etc. Before we start, um, it turns out it's mostly the SSD which can be upgraded. Um, SSD in this mini M2 form, it's a 2242 now, it's going to be smaller than the traditional M2 card. Um, as you can see, this one is a double-sided SSD. Do not, I repeat, do not use this one in the X1 Nano. Um, they're not designed for the X1 Nano. We've checked ourselves, um, so this way you don't have to look for yourselves. And obviously, um, the single-sided um, SSD, the one that comes with the laptop, is the one to go for. Well, the first thing is we have um, to go into the BIOS and disable the built-in battery. Just um, as a precaution. Once it's unscrewed, simply remove the base cover. It just comes off very easily. Immediately, you will see the internals. Straight on the inside, you'll notice that very few things can be actually upgraded. So the M2 storage and potentially one day the cellular card. Let's take a look at the M2. You'll see the two screws here. All you do is just gently nudge it out. Um, make sure you do take the second screw out because copper is very soft, so you wouldn't want to damage it. So this is a heat sink effectively on the M2 drive. It's quite important to make sure that you have the right screwdriver size. So as you can see, it's a very small heat sink for the SSD, just so hopefully it doesn't overheat. We can nudge it by the edge, see if we can nudge it out. Take extra care. This is um, smaller M2 format. If we compare it to a full size M2, you can see that it's actually quite a lot smaller, so roughly half the size. This M2 format is also more expensive at the moment. It seems to go up to two terabytes. With that longer M2, you seem to be able to get up to eight terabyte. Obviously, some of the SSD will be um, double sided, so Take a look at compatibility with your model first. Today we've got this specific version of the SSD. It's the only one at the moment we can find which is uh, NVMe and in the size and available. So we're just opening this. On the inside we do have the instruction menu. You can see it's double-sided. I thought this might be an issue um, because if we look here, you can see single-sided. Um, you can quite clearly see which one is which, right? Okay, let's see if it works. Mm. Nope. Um, nope. Let's try it with the thermal pad removed from here. You can definitely see the drive is nudging up a little bit. But what we'll also notice is that if we gently press down a little bit, it's actually very close to the screw hole. It can be inserted appropriately. And again, um, just being very gentle on this, you notice the heat sink is a little bit nudging in a direction, but obviously it seems the single-sided um, SSD is designed um, specification. Just to keep in mind, of course, there's still a heat sink on top of the SSD. So in terms of the heat dissipation, probably um, stick to the single-sided um, if you can. Okay, so we're just in Windows now, and um, as you can see, 2TB SSD, so it definitely works. I'm just waiting for some drivers to... it's uh, detecting the drive. Um, so once we've screwed on the base cover, it seems the side of it sits quite flush with the casing, so we don't see any extra bit um, nudging out, which is quite helpful. So provided that you remove the thermal pad that came with the original SSD from underneath the SSD, believe the heat spreader on top. Seems to fit quite snugly, probably almost a little bit too close to comfort. But I guess if you do want a bigger SSD. I suppose if the aim is to make the laptop lighter and thinner, then it's really logical to see why manufacturers have started moving to this smaller M2 format. It already probably covers a reasonable amount of the customer base in terms of, you know, going up to 512. That's, that's not, you know, that's not small. 
thinner laptops, traditionally have had um, slight difficulty in accommodating the thicker SSDs. It's not just this new format. With the older standard M2, it's some of the thinner laptops you just weren't able to use a double-sided um, SSD. Yeah, ideal scenario, it would be great if the manufacturers recognize that these double-sided storage SSD, they do exist. I mean, that'd be great. Perhaps it only takes for the drive connector to be raised by about one millimeter just to accommodate it. It's really quite a small adjustment. And for this more space-constrained format, it would be really useful to see in the future products. Let's uh, take a look at the internals um, so we at least get to see the system better. So two speakers of the four on this laptop. And you can see quite tightly how well packaged things seem to be. So the battery is a 48 watts hour battery, similar to the X13. And um, the cellular card, we've got the LTE model, so it came with it by standard. But I don't know if the um, cables will be included if you've gone with the standard version. As you can see, the heatsink single large one across the laptop is actually quite large heat pipe. What's quite different about this fan design is it's more or less enclosed. You can only see a little bit of it where it's drawing the air in. You can see correspondingly the metal mesh on the base cover is actually um, not as fine as before. We've already had some built up of um, dusts there. We've cleaned it just now. Looking at it on the side, you can see the vent, like a regular vent, and um, it um, goes through the exit on the chassis on the right hand side. But yeah, it's it's quite interesting design. So it manages to stay quite cool under normal use, which is actually quite impressive. And keep in mind, this is a 10 nanometer Intel design. One of the things um, that's quite perplexing for me, at least, is well, underneath the fan power cable, you can see the Wi-Fi chip. It's sort of onto the motherboard. It's quite a strange decision, but I guess the idea is to integrate as many parts onto the motherboard as possible. So you can make it quite thin and light. Um, you can definitely see there's some space saving over a typical chip. The only issue is obviously the wireless chip is probably one of those things you want to upgrade over time, potentially. And it's also possible that a Wi-Fi card may fail, whereas um, you probably don't want to replace a motherboard each time your Wi-Fi card has an issue. Just quite tightly packaged um, design. Overall, I think the design is some. Um, seems to allow the laptop to stay reasonably cool. We hold this base cover from this angle, you can see we can sort of almost flex it a little bit. But I think that's not really an issue. It's just the edge of the chassis is actually really extremely robust. So having a slightly flexy base cover is not really an issue. A quick observation is that the speaker module is actually quite reasonably sized. So that's one part and you can see the other part, it's pretty much matching. So it's not, I thought it was just immediately this part, but it's actually one large module there. And there's two speakers facing you on the um, palm rest side as well. Usually during the charging, this side gets a little bit warm and the rest of the laptop, you can feel some of the heat, but it's pretty when you put it on performance mode, when the fan spins more actively, generally quite well managed. Just to wrap up, so once the base cover is back on, um, there's much less flex on the cover. Some area feels a little bit softer, but I guess it's if your laptop is 900 grams, um, there has to be some areas of it where it's uh, less um, robust in comparison to the usual, but yeah, it's, the lid feels quite robust, which is quite nice. Um, anyway, yeah, hope um, hope this has been helpful and um, have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you.